Okay, and we are recording, and hello, this is Dorothy Kuhn, and I'm here with the fabulous Sabine Hutchison. She is in Germany. I am just outside of Dallas, and <laughs> uh, we are talking today about one of my very favorite topics, which is really, what are those characteristics, those markers that, uh, that people in, uh, hiring decisions and promoting decisions are making what are the what are you looking for and sabine will tell us what she's looking for uh to be able to promote uh anyone into that next level to, to hire someone into that uh, kind of next level so that you uh dear listeners and uh and viewers can be clear on how it is that you need to show up in your best self for the next level for you. Sabine, right. tell us a little bit about you. Well, thanks very much. I'm glad we were happy. I'm, I'm really happy that we were able to set up the call with all of the crazy time differences and changes. So thanks very much for your flexibility around that. Um, yeah, I'm, my name is Sabina Hutchison, obviously, as you just introduced. Um, I am very American and um, but living in Germany. I've been here for 22 years now and through many ups and downs, and uh, I'm enjoying life here. I feel quite at home. Um, I still miss so many things about the U.S. I think uh, one of the things that, someone just asked, asked me that last night, we were at a dinner party, and someone asked me what I missed about the U.S., and I think one of the things, and a lot has to do with the get up and go, um, that individuals aren't afraid of risk, and I think that that's actually some of the points that when you look at individuals also as you're interviewing them, what is going to help them move forward in their career is willing to be willing to take a risk and to take a step that you feel is a few um, steps too, too big for you. Uh, so do that. And I think that that's one of the things that I think everyone should do. Don't be afraid. Yes, don't be yeah. afraid. And that is easier said than done, isn't it? Yeah, it is very much easier said than done. And I think sometimes when we start with these risks, it's really interesting because you you ask some some of the questions that you ask about is what are um, what do we look for and we work we hire individuals for our organization but we um, as a recruitment organization we also help companies find staff uh, for their for their companies and also for their senior um, positions within the organization and one of the things that lacks or what we see lacking with so many women, unfortunately, is just the confidence side. You know, you hear it over and over again, and we see it in action, mm -hmm. is that when we have a job description or we're talking about a position, um, often women pick the three points that they don't meet and then exclude themselves from the possibility of moving forward within the role. And that's just so unfortunate. Um, that you go into the you go looking at the position and immediately pull out the things that you don't match to instead of escalating the points where you do match where your strengths are and saying I can do that and these three points I'm sure I can um, bone up on those or I can learn or I can um, get the skills that I need to move forward in that so yeah, that's what yeah. we see quite a bit yes with yes. You know, one of the differences, to, to your point, one of the differences that I, that I notice between women and men is that uh, we as women uh, tend to feel like we need to be 100% uh, there in order to go for that next thing. And the guys will, uh, will say, am, am I 50%? If I'm 50%, I'm going for it. I got it. I got this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Because they yeah. know that they can learn it. Yeah, exactly right. I remember also when I was uh, when I was working in a large large organization before I started uh, my own business, actually with my best friend. Uh, I was going through a leadership program, and my boss said, "Okay, this is going to be great." One of the aspects of the leadership program was um, meeting with the board. I was like, I was quite nervous. I was a bit younger in my career, a bit, a little bit younger than I am now. <laughs> and I uh, was a bit nervous about that. He's like, you know, don't be, it's going to be fine. And I think that we also put these labels on individuals that have potentially higher roles than us. And we assume and make assumptions that they're much smarter and much more seasoned than we are. And it's not necessarily always the case. Uh, I went into that uh, meeting with these various board members and I thought, okay, you're impressive, but 
I had elevated them to a pedestal that was nowhere near where they really were. And I think oh. we do a lot of these kind of things to ourselves. And so when we go into meetings or we meet senior individuals, we put them on a pedestal and they shouldn't necessarily be there. Yes. And maybe we're even a bit higher on the pedestal than what we think. So mm -hmm. it's also quite a mindset. When you go into it, it really and is. And being really, oh, I'm pardon me, you're finishing. Say again. Uh, and just when we go into meetings and, 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 and are being introduced to individuals, we immediately escalate uh, people and we don't necessarily need to do that. We don't need to do that. You are so right. One of the things that I, that I find in, in my clients to get them really clear on what's a great match. Mm -hmm. And it's not that it has to be perfect or everything. I mean, we live on planet Earth, not planet right. perfect. There is yeah, no perfect. Exactly. There is no perfect, absolutely. And so, and, and so to get really, really uh, clear on, you know, what, what really is a great match. And it's not at this in your head stuff, because the mm -hmm. stuff that's, that's like uh, uh, in your head math, the math, the description, the, the skill set, that kind of thing. But when, uh, when I was in, in my uh, career, I would look for what do I want to learn in mm -hmm. that next position? Exactly. And if you open your mind to what do you want to learn mm -hmm. and what kind of executive do you need to be working for to be able mm -hmm. to learn that and, and go into what those kind of small things are like. There was one time mm -hmm. that I realized I, I was good at like the nuts and bolts of, of what I was, uh, the kinds of big projects I was running. But I wasn't as good on like that fingertip feel of the organization, mm -hmm. which is really important to develop that as you move up. Yep. And, uh, and so I really wanted to work for uh, an executive who, who was good at that. And mm -hmm. I interviewed with a variety of uh, companies and the, and the one that, you know, when you know exactly what you want, then mm -hmm. you're recognizing it will make it highly likely that the other person will recognize that connection. Exactly. Yes, exactly. And sometimes you do have to put a bit of the Hollywood facade on. That's just how it is. And you need to oversell just a bit. We all do it. And, and well, I, <laughs> I have a tendency to do it. I oversell a bit, but always in a confident manner where I know that I can achieve the target. I'm still confident. It's, yes. it's taking, taking a step and putting yourself out there, but knowing that you can achieve it. It's, it may take a few extra steps to get there but you know in your heart that you can do it right okay i'm not going to apply for a position as a surgeon although you know I, we had we had a joke with a friend the other day i've watched Grey's anatomy so many times that I, i'm still not going to apply for a position as a surgeon <laughs> there are other bits um within an organization as a as being a vp or leading a business development team if i don't have everything you you there are pieces exactly as you described it you if you have enough and you have um I would say, yeah, 50, 60 percent, you should be taking that step and not being too cautious around it. And this is similar to, I mean, think about, you know, top uh, tennis players. You know, yes. do, do they uh, lob the ball or shoot it into the middle of the court? No, mm -hmm. they are play to the edges of the court. Yep, exactly. Yep, that's a very good analogy. That's a very good description. That's and, right. And we, you know, that level of, uh, of comfort at being able to take risk really has to do with with a taking it a step at a time and mm -hmm. and b uh understanding what your options are if you know the you know how to recover if the risk doesn't turn out for you and mm -hmm. thinking through that is absolutely critical to know that you've got the skill to figure it mm -hmm. out no matter what Exactly. And I think if it comes down, you know, all of these things are quite basic. Um, it comes to asking yourself, what's the worst thing that can happen if I take this risk? That's all it is. What's the worst thing? When I moved to Germany um, 22 years ago, I really came without a job. I was in love um, with my now husband. And um, I came with my two suitcases, nothing else. I didn't know what I was going to do. And it was, it was scary, but I was also, I knew that I needed to do it. And my parents said to me at the time, they were like, the worst thing that can happen is you have to buy a ticket back. And that was it. So yes. that was the worst thing. So I buy a ticket and I come back, um, but I've still had an adventure on the way. Mm -hmm. So I think women need to ask themselves that. 
more often, what's the worst thing that can happen? If that's I take right. Off? That's right. And to, uh, you know, so often now, you know, here in the U.S., as, as you can see on the news these days all over the place, is that our political and, and social conversations have gotten to be uh, sharper and, and a bit meaner here recently. Mm -hmm. Right. And, yeah. Uh, not not that this isn't a new phenomenon. It's just kind of <laughs> taken up a step. The whole social media yeah. thing has us a little bit disconnected, and it's easier to be, you know, crank, frankly, just a little unnecessarily mean to other yeah, people. Yeah, that's true. But uh, but given that, you know, you know, one of the things that's great about social media is that you can block people, and yeah. and there are ways energetically, you know, from your mind and your heart to to block other people. At, and part of it is just to know that everybody comes from their own perspective, and if if they're saying something mean about you that isn't you, that's just the chances of that being something that they would do if they were in your shoes is right. like over 90 percent yep exactly and most people are also going to be too cautious especially if you look in the business world that we're in um i think no one is even going to be confident enough to even to say too many negative things around you in the social media side of things i think that i, I would hope that in a business within a company and with an organization that those things would not be happening mm -hmm. um, but you're right yeah it could happen and then you block it away it's only one voice yeah, it's only one voice. And, you know, our brains are kind of wired to keep us safe. Uh, they're definitely wired to keep us safe, actually. Right. And and we'll take that one little thing, you know, and and turn it into something that is bigger. Like, I've, I've totally got to avoid this. I, I have one client who uh, went for a promotion and, and got it, and she's absolutely great at it. And some, some uh, one of her colleagues said, well, you, you just feel entitled to that. Well, A, she had worked for it, that mm -hmm. entitles her to it. B, right. she went for it, that entitles her to it. And, and C, she loved doing it. Any one of those entitles her to, to go yeah. for what she wants. So heck I'm yeah right. is a great <laughs> response. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's very right. Entitlement doesn't have to be a bad word, does it? No, no. I mean, <laughs> we are entitled to the things that we work for and step up and do. Yeah. Period. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think some of the things that we should work on are actually quite simple um, because one of the questions that you asked in the beginning was about what do we look for and what can individuals do um, to move forward and to take that next step in their career. And one of the things I did, um, I volunteer also for an organization that's called the Health Business Women's Association. It's the HBA. Mm -hmm. And it's, an or it's a nonprofit organization. And um, it's really about uh, encouraging, especially women in the healthcare industry. We support each other to move forward and also give confidence and do what we can in this movement of, of diversity and, and inclusion. So we have a small piece and we hope that um, we are, we are uh, moving forward and encouraging um, women to take steps in their careers and pushing this, uh, pushing this needle forward with diversity. And I gave a seminar, um, a short session for a group, and there were such basic things. People came up to me afterwards and they were like, oh my gosh, this is just, this is simple, but it's just taking the time to do it. It's, it's making your career book. When you think everyone gets a new project, uh, how do they start? They put a plan together. Mm -hmm. So it's about putting a plan together for your career and where you want to go. Who do you want to meet? When do you want to meet them? Um, what's the story about, what's your story, and formulating that so when you're in a situation you feel confident um, in talking about yourself and telling a beautiful story. I think that we just often don't practice that enough and do that, that we get in situations and we're just not comfortable. Someone asks you about yourself and you begin to fumble with the words and your face gets red and you're like, oh, what am I doing? I know about myself, but I haven't practiced it enough to be concise and clear in what my point is and what I want to express to this individual. Um, so I think so. Those yeah. are just some of the basic things that we can start doing is practicing and putting a beautiful story together about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that is such a true thing. You know, we, we have this word in, in English, history. It's, it's, it comes from two things, his story. And, you yeah. know, the first uh, recognized, we have lots of history throughout uh, ancient times, mm -hmm. but the first recognized 
uh, a historian was mm-hmm. Thucydides, and he chronicled, he wrote down as a general, mm-hmm. you know, the the history of what uh, he and he, he was a general, so he and mm-hmm. his troops were doing uh, throughout the Peloponnesian uh, right. area of uh, Southern yeah. Europe and or what we now call Southern Europe. Mm-hmm. And he was, uh, he was really brilliant about that. Men have been telling the stories of their stories. Yeah. For years. And one exactly. of the things, I think I mentioned to you that uh, here in the Dallas area, I'm chairing the Dallas, um, her story, uh, Women's uh, Global Empowerment oh, Conference. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, there, are, there are a thousand of these events that are going on all over the globe, uh, mm-hmm. starting in Wellington, New Zealand, uh, here in just a couple months. So mm-hmm. uh, uh, we are, and when we as women tell our stories of accomplishment, mm-hmm. of, you know, trial and firing, getting past mm-hmm. it, of, uh, you know, all of the wonderful things that, that we do, whether they're personally or professionally, those, when those stories are known, then mm-hmm. we're in a position and other women are, are in a position to think, I can do that too. Yes, exactly. And I can tell my story and tra- and showing women how to tell their story, you know, mm-hmm. concisely is is absolutely wonderful and key to getting other people to go. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, women, she did that, and it's interesting because we also on our um, on our web page because we are we are I, f- I feel so lucky to be able to speak to so many amazing people and we decided to put together also a series called the inspiring journey and we wanted to put also um, we wanted to put these stories out there so others could hear them because our hope is is that someone hears something is inspired by it yes. and potentially helps them to take a next step so I think it's so important to share because if we don't, that's that's hindering us, and it's not. It's potentially helping someone um, that's moving up in their career, or potentially someone that's established to take their next step. So these, this is such a valuable, important piece. Yes. Um, what we do is sharing that story and encouraging each other to do it as well. Mm-hmm. That's what I really think is fantastic about what you do. So it's it's getting it's interesting, right? We're getting into this network of individuals where we're helping each other, which is so critical because we have to be there for each other to share these stories and to get things out there. So I think it's also fantastic what you're doing as well. Well, thank you. And uh, and I will send you uh, and uh, we'll post in the comments uh, for, for this interview uh, uh, where people can sign up, not just for the Dallas, but but for mm-hmm. uh, other places around the world. You might want to come to Dallas, but there might be another place that's closer. <laughs> yeah, I think there might be something closer here. I think so. I yeah, think definitely. so. And, you know, it's just absolutely fantastic. You know, I'll, I'll tell a little story, and then I want to hear if you've got a, mm-hmm. a story like this. So every, uh, every one of us has, you know, our brains uh, serve us by presuming things all the time and Mm -hmm. we presume things and project those presumptions onto other people based on just what we can observe like in the first few seconds you know Mm -hmm. what they look like uh, uh, how they show up you know uh, kind of are they tired or are they you know Mm -hmm. on on fire and alive you know what's their what's their attitude all those subtle little things and your brain will automatically serve up to you the all the information you know about a person who shows up just like the person that's in front of you and some and that's useful uh in the main Mm -hmm. but you know just like any the strategy, it's a brain strategy that we are biologically wired to have, but everything works until it doesn't. Yeah. And so being able to tell your story is mm-hmm. so critically important. Uh, I was at, I was picking up some auto parts a couple months back and you know, you would not, I mean, I'm a tall skinny gal, always have yeah. been, and I do not look like the kind of person who would know anything about working on automobiles. Right. But I, I grew up with my dad in the garage yep. and he taught me all that stuff. And yeah. I have rebuilt two, not one, two car engines from the block up. Now, right. I was in my 20s. I, you know, was trying, I was at the auto parts store a couple months ago trying to remember the name of a part. 
I did like think for a minute and you could just see like the blood drooling, <laughs> dropping out of the face of this poor guy behind the counter, like another one of those people who doesn't waste my time, blah, 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 you know? Yeah. So I just told him that, you know, I know I don't look the part, but, and you know, I showed up my hands. Now he's not going to believe that I did it, but if I tell him my hands did it, he can believe <laughs> that easier, right? Right. And uh, and the, you could just see the lightness come back into him. And the, by the time I told that little tiny, you know, 10 second snippet of a story, the name of that part had come to me. Right. And, you know, so buy yourself yeah. some time with a good time, Exactly. Yeah. Antidotes are amazing. And I think that that's when we look at leadership skills um, and moving up within an organization, it's not necessarily... Um, yeah, all of the technical things, right? We're putting together a program, which we're quite proud of, around um, putting a program together to help women be board ready at various levels within their, their career. And when we were looking through um, the program and deciding what to put in, you know, we thought, okay, a P&L, everyone knows about a P&L. We don't really need to get into a lot of detail about that. What we do need to teach people to do is to tell stories and to pull people along and and that is such a powerful powerful um skill to have not only in presenting yourself but also using antidotes and pulling people along and giving examples and keeping keeping this engagement is just an incredible thing and i believe that if you're a good storyteller you can actually um, be a strong, uh, yeah, a strong leader within an organization and maybe lack a few other, the technical kind of skills. But if you get the people with you moving forward, they're the ones that are, they're the ones that are getting the things done. And right. that's important. Yeah. So. And, and as you go up, then, then, you know, you're going up the, uh, you can call these the logical levels, you know, you're not just doing, doing, doing here, but, right. but uh, as you move up, all you need to do is, uh, is to be able to know what are those higher level um, mm -hmm. indicators that right. the, the work being done at the level that you used to work at right. is being done on time uh, at the quality that you need and, and things like that. Right. And especially at the CEO level as well, if you're presenting to your board and you need a new round of financing, um, you can put up all the financial slides that you want. But if you're not able to tell a clear, concise story as to what you're going to be doing, you know, the chances are that you could not get the funding that you want or you get less. Whereas if you have the strong story and you're able to bring that across mm -hmm. coherently and, and pull people along with you, the chances are much greater. And I think people underestimate that skill and the need to be able to do that. Oh, it's critical. And to be able to open with a big idea that is powerful, that paints a picture yes. of the future, that this, mm -hmm. that uh, the, the project is just a tool to get you to a future uh, or get the company or the organization to a future that is important, that does mm -hmm. things uh, that, that are good, you know, for all the stakeholders mm -hmm. in, in your ecosystem. Right. It's about being different as well, isn't it? It's about standing out because if you think about going into a job interview, um, you know, when, especially if you have a CV, so that needs to be strong and concise. But then once you start talking to someone, um, normally they're going to be talking to you because you have the skills, right? So those have got to be there or you wouldn't even be invited to the interview. Exactly. So the rest is all about not sitting in an interview and ticking the box and going down and saying, I did this and I did this, but it's talking about you and, and really the, so what I always tell people to think about this. If you talk about something that you've done, mm -hmm. ask yourself, so what, what does that mean? Just look, okay. I, um, I created a project plan for this project. Well, so what, what does that mean for the organization and how did you benefit that? So it shows a business, um, a sense that you have right. and not just that you did something, but the why behind it and what value did this add to the organization that you work with. So there, there are a few simple little things that you can do when you're presenting yourself and talking about yourself that are so valuable and that that put you steps ahead of potentially someone else who's just going down the tick list and saying um, things that they've done. Yeah, because because when you are going for a new position um, and and particularly a position up, they want to know that you can uh, think at that next higher level of abstraction, mm -hmm. so to speak. So yeah. when I'm uh, coaching uh, clients on 
um, on writing their resume uh, for mm -hmm. a new position, then it's like uh, just, you know, adding uh, just a thin little line about what's the big idea of that company. Right. Like if yeah. you work for, say, if you work for a Fortune 50 bank uh, somewhere mm -hmm. on the on the planet, then, you know, world's, you know, uh, 50th uh, uh, financial institution with Mm -hmm. uh, a gross revenue of x billion dollars or you know just to pick something right. and mm -hmm. that's just one little line that that indicates you understand business value now that isn't the only value a business yeah. brings but mm -hmm. the thing then the things that you've done if you've done uh work in two or three areas of the company then you get to like have just one little line for each of those mm -hmm. two or three areas or yeah. if it's one just one uh, yeah. where you get to talk about what was the business value? Did you expand mm -hmm. your uh, consumer base or your client base? Uh, did you uh, improve uh, profitability or, right. or improve uh, net revenue in? Mm -hmm. you know, those are the kinds yeah. of business markers that when you know how to put those in a CV or a resume, make all mm -hmm. the difference that all people say, she's got it going on. Yeah, because most companies read things and they're like, yeah, you know, they did this, they did this. But again, it's the so what question. Always ask when you're putting points in your CV, ask yourself, so what? So what? Also, what? Very, mm -hmm. So what? What did it bring? What did it do? How is the company stronger because of what I contributed to them? Exactly. Exactly. Well, I've, yeah. this is absolutely fantastic. You might have uh, something else that you uh, that that is on your mind that that you really want to share. Uh, to uh, particularly the women who are listening in today? Well, one of the things that I want to share is to step up and do something and ask yourself, what am I doing um, to promote other women? I believe that it is important and I believe that we have to support each other. So when you get up in the morning, really look at yourself and say, what am I going to do today to make an impact? And I think that's a very important thing. And uh, we always end our presentations um, within the company where you ask yourself, um, are you proud of what you're doing? Mm -hmm. So I believe that if you do those things, if you think about the impact that you make, and, and if you're proud of what you're doing, um, you're going to have confidence, and um, that's going to help you in so many aspects of your career. And don't be afraid to take a career step. Yes, um, uh -huh. and, and learn to turn away those naysayers. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Take a risk. And if it doesn't work, you just take another one. You know, we were in um, our company. Um, the name is in Zeus. Zeus is inspired by actually Dr. Seuss. Because if you think about it, that's, oh, the places you'll go. I don't know if you know. I think a lot of people know the book. Yes. Uh -huh. And it's all about that because there are going to be things. You're going to take a risk and you're going to potentially get knocked down. But I believe that you're, you're going to come out of that situation much stronger, mm -hmm. smarter, and you're going to be able to take another step and another risk. So it's about just continuing on that path that you want to go. There are going to be bumps. There are going to be people that, there are going to be people that come in your way and maybe knock you down as well. But just to continue and don't let those situations, make let those situ situations make you more powerful and not more afraid. Yes, yes. And, and that's... Uh great advice and the kinds of programs that that I run help women who who are experiencing that fear to to work through that a step at a time so that they yes. can get to that place of confidence yeah. and, mm -hmm. and moving forward and when people say mean things to know how to turn that away with a bit of fun so that yeah. they like you on the other side the yeah. worst thing that we can do is go la, 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 la. you yeah. know and yeah. kind of choose somebody out uh, you know, uh, I heard this phrase just recently. Uh, anytime you're disagreeing with somebody uh, at at you know the mild level or a or a more difficult level, it's always good to leave them with that golden gate of retreat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that yeah. so that they've got a place to go other than defending the bad thing mm -hmm. that they did. And right. This is all about you know very much related to building in uh, good boundaries. And honestly, mm -hmm. we notice a boundary that we have when somebody kind of crosses it, mm -hmm. right? And then we'll think, yeah. oh, and, and to take that as a learning opportunity. So the next time, you, you've got a more elegant way to respond. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we were just at a meeting actually over the weekend and then I'll come, maybe I'll end with this. And this is also a very, very useful tool. Um, at the end of the meetings, we, um, uh, we actually, this time there were so many of us, so we had an envelope and in that envelope, you had to write a note to each individual about something that you value about them and what they, um, the value add that they brought to that meeting. Mm -hmm. And you also needed to write a point about something that they should improve on. Um, that they could work on and um, become better. And that's kind of, a, some people again are nervous about that, but everyone left that meeting so much more powerful because their eyes are opened. You know, if we don't encourage and share improvement for each other, we're never gonna get any better, are we? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that that's also a very important thing. It's good to share the positive, but it's also good to share the areas for improvement because if nobody, if I don't have someone confront me with the areas that I need to improve on, I'll, I won't be able to improve them because I may not be aware of them. Uh -huh. So I would encourage um, individuals to do that. Right. Very much. And, you know, the, none of us are perfect. We're, we're just yeah humans doing the best we can and yes but but our you know the thing that makes us incredibly powerful creatures here on planet earth is mm -hmm. that we have the ability to learn from yes. our past and mm -hmm. do better next time and and exactly. having a community that helps you do that there's mm -hmm. nothing better. It's wonderful. Exactly. So embrace the communities that are there. There, there are so many out there, um, and find those that fit for you. Definitely. Utilize. Definitely. Well, this has just been fantastic, Sabine. Yeah, what what would you recommend as you're kind of wrapping up? And how can people get a hold of you? Oh, well, I, I'm um, probably the easiest way before I go through long email addresses or company um, e uh, websites. Um, I'm on LinkedIn and my name is Sabina Hutchison. Um, so you can definitely find me there. So I'd love to connect or um, share ideas or share stories with anyone. And um, again, I think I go back to, the, um, to my statement, don't be afraid um, to take a risk. Very good, very good. Well, this has just been fantastic. And of course, you can uh, always... Catch me, uh, dear listeners, at dorothycoon.com slash gift. Uh, that, that, along with uh, Sabine, Sabine's uh, LinkedIn profile link, will be in the show notes. Uh, and additionally, the Her Story Conference, where you oh, are. Uh, yeah, I look forward to that as well. That you can get to that. So yeah, it's just been fantastic, Sabina. That, this is wonderful. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you okay. very much as well. Enjoy your Bye. Sunday. Thanks. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.